My buddy asked me to throw him a bachelor party, right? And so, um, so there's a bunch of this um, that, that if you haven't seen it live, you haven't seen most of uh, the worst things that happened to my friend. So he asked me to throw him a bachelor party. I said no. And I said no because I know me. And I know that if you ask me to do something seriously for you, I'm not going to. Like, as soon as he asked me, I was like, well, I'm going to fuck you. I'm going to fuck him up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do something terrible to him, you know? And he's, I said, you don't want me to do this, dude. You just don't want me to. I'm going to fuck up your day. And he goes, nah, man, you've been to Vegas more than any of us. Just plan the party and get the girl. And I said, all right. So I, I did get him a girl from the end of the party. And one thing, by the way, that nobody, I haven't ta talked about is I did get him a girl. There was a girl in the hotel room waiting for him for the end. But when I told him, I go, you got to go in that other room. He didn't trust me to go because I had just unleashed the fury on him. You know what I mean? So, so um, the lap dance went to somebody else. Uh, uh, I was like, oh, I can't let it go to waste. I mean, shit, you know? So I said, all right, I'll get you the girl, man. But I wanted something that entertained me at the top of the store, at the top of the party. And what entertains me is weird shit, guys. I like weird, I like weird shit. Weird shit makes me laugh. Where did I think I could find something weird for him? I went on Craigslist in Vegas, and I was just looking through it. And, oh, there's so many good, weird things on Craigslist. And I'm scrolling through, and I'm scrolling through, and I pass all the sex stuff, and I land on the weird, and the weird was three words and her phone number. And the advertisement just said, I'll wrestle you, and I was like, fuck yeah, you will. <laughs> that at least deserves a phone call, you know? So I call her on the phone. Now on the phone, she told me she was six foot two fifty. On the phone. And um, she told me that her skill set is she comes to your house, she gets naked, and she beats the shit out of you for a little while. <laughs> yeah, I was like, well... What time can you get here? <laughs> and so, she, and she asked me, by the way, she did ask me. She goes, do you want me to send you a picture? I go, no, oh, you painted a pretty good picture. I know who's coming over. Like, I, I, you don't need to validate yourself. All you said is six foot 250. And after that, it was like, wah, 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 right? Now, so she shows up at the hotel, and I'm the only one there. Now, here's the first thing my friend never wanted me to tell you. Ready for this? First thing he ever wanted me to tell you is when I opened the door, six foot was real. 250. Not real. She was deep into the threes. Deep, deep, deep into the threes. And I asked her, I go, hey, how come you didn't tell me you were over 250 pounds? And she said, well, I didn't want to scare you away. And I told her, I go, hey, just so you know, for the future of your business, Anybody who's calling about 250 isn't scared of 300. <laughs> you, could, you could charge me extra is all I'm saying. But, I mean, you should be charging by the pound, but I'm not your manager. So, And so she was holding a foot-long sub and 24 buffalo wings. And she just waved them at me. And she goes, you got a room where I could go fuel up before the match? And I was like, first of all, fuck yes I do. It's right in there, actually. I said, second of all, you should know that the person you're wrestling today doesn't know there's going to be a match. <laughs> I don't know if that changes your professional approach at all, but I thought you should know, right? So she goes off into her room to eat, I'm assuming, and uh, my buddy comes over and he's sitting down on a stool and I got him blindfolded. And here are a couple other things that he never wanted me to tell you. He's the squarest square I've ever met in my life. He's marrying his high school sweetheart. He's never seen another woman naked before. <laughs> Guys, do you understand? This is only the second naked body he will ever have seen in his life. Oh, it's gonna fuck him up. I, I can't wait, you know what I mean? He sent me a text two weeks before the party that just said, do all boobs feel the same? And I was like, oh my God, I can't wait for this fucking party!
And he told me he was ready. And I said, cool. And I call her out. Now, none of my other friends knew what I had planned. So when she walked out of that room naked, collectively, they were like, what the fuck? And as she got closer, I could see that she still had buffalo wings on. So I was going to get her a napkin, but I was like, man, your face is so funny. So my buddy is sitting there. And here's the thing. He's not a big dude. He's 5'8". 140 if he's wearing a lot of fucking clothes. Like, he's a tiny dude, man. And he was, but he was so excited there was a naked woman standing in front of him. His hands were shaking. And he was like, oh, oh, oh. I'm so excited. And I was like, huh. Oh, oh. Me too. And guys, I just sit back and I was looking at him for a second. Both of them. My buddy, 5'8, 140, blindfolded, trembling like a leaf on a stool, standing in front of him, naked, six foot, deep into the threes. And I'm just looking at the two of them and I'm thinking to myself, this was a good purchase. <laughs> Zero buyer's remorse on this purchase. Like, I am already 100%. I have three kids. This is already the best night of my fucking life. Like... But I've known this dude forever, man. So I lean into him. I go, man, I just want to make sure we're cool. Uh, I know you're married to your high school sweetheart and your life partner, but you've got a naked woman standing in front of you. Do you want me to send her home? And he got serious. And he goes, you better not. <laughs> and I said, well, just remember you said that, and let's get started, you know? And I take off his blindfold. And the only word he could get out of his mouth before she ripped him out of his chair was why? Like that, right? And she yanked him up in the air and his little feet were dangling in the air. She started to toss him around like a room like a rag doll and I was like, that's what I'm fucking talking about! She would jump on top of him and he had to push her fat out of his face to talk to us. He was like, tell him to stop! How long is she gonna be here? I can't breathe! Why does she smell like buffalo wing sauce? Right? At one point in time, she had her knees on his elbows, pinning them down to the ground. And she was just beating him in the face with her titties, just... And these aren't five foot two, 110 pound, big, big titties. This is six foot. Deep into the threes. Just. That's how big her titties were. They made that noise through the air. Just. It was like being hit with a tit missile. Just. It sounds. You know what it sounded like? It sounded like if you close your eyes, it sounded like a titty pterodactyl. Just. <laughs> ha ha! You know? You know, like in the Rocky movies, when he get hit by a punch and his whole face would go, oh. <laughs> One titty was like, ga ga ga. Right? So, look. If you've seen the video online, you. It cuts right now to me talking about him, her standing here and him standing here mad. So what he never let me tell you is why he was so mad. So I will tell you. So she stands up to take a rest. He's on his knees. Here's a couple things you need to know that have been happening all night that he obviously never wanted me to tell you. First of all, she's been undressing him the whole night. So at this point of the night, he's wearing boxers, one sock. <laughs> Oh, it's been a rough night for my man, you know what I mean? It's not been a good time for him, you know? So, here's another thing. By the way, you have to know how much I loved this woman. We all went out and got fucked up after the party. She was amazing. Guys, let me tell you how much of a gangster this woman was. One of my buddies got so drunk he couldn't walk out of the bar. She picked him up over the shoulder. Firemen carried him out of the fucking bar. And let me tell you why she was so good. You know how you're kind of bouncy when you're getting firemen carried, right? He's bouncing, bouncing, and at one point he just looks up and she goes, he, he just looks up and goes, 
I think she just farted in my face, right? <laughs> she didn't miss a beat. And she just goes, that's right, bitch. Like that, just walk. I was like, I love this woman, you know? But so, the other thing I really liked about her is that she was really passionate about her job. I like people who like what they do. And she paid attention to detail. How did I know that? So her one sock, leaving that on, was important to her. That was attention to detail. That was her way of telling him, hey, you don't get to decide shit tonight. Because he hated that one sock. He hated it because he could never get his footing. He always slipped when he tried to brace himself, right? So he hated it, so he kept taking it off and throwing it across the room. But every time he did, she would walk over and pick it up, sit on his chest, and put that motherfucker back on him. <laughs> like a bitch. I... <laughs> every time she did, there was a little tear that came to my eye. I'm like, I love you so much. <laughs> Guys, he was head to toe sweat. She had been beating the shit out of him for 20 or 25 minutes. And I know a lot of people think that's hyperbole when I say it. It is not. She was noticeably bigger. More than twice his size. She was legitimately way stronger than him. And here's how you can tell someone is stronger than another human being. Because there were parts of the night, and this still makes me laugh when I think about it. There were parts of the night where she would... <laughs> the visual is great. Where she would just grab him by the shoulders, and this is how you can tell she was stronger than him. She would just grab him by the shoulders and just fucking shake him. <laughs> and his whole body just... You, you, know, <laughs> you know what he looked like? He looked like, you know, you know those uh, wind socks out in front of a tire store? That he... <laughs> it looked like he didn't have any bones in his little body. She was just fucking him up, you know what I mean? I was like, oh, she's going to rearrange his organs. Like, he's in trouble, you know? He was breathing like this. Because <sighs> every time she got him on the ground, she would smother him with her gigantic boobs. And I guess he couldn't breathe. Because when she moved his bo her boobs, his head would pop up like this. <sighs> like he'd been underwater for 20 minutes. Just, <sighs> right? So she's standing here. She just fucked him up. And he goes to crawl off the floor. He didn't get up and walk. This dude has no energy for that. He's crawling off the floor. And she's standing on the other side of the room. Um, and she gave him uh, what I like to call five feet of hope. Because he really thought he was about to get away. You know what I mean? And she just took like two giant strides, grabbed him by the ankle, looked at all of us, and just went... She was so much stronger than him. Both of his legs ha, popped up in the air, right? Bam, he landed on the ground, and she starts to slowly drag him back to the middle of the room. Guys, he doesn't want any part of the middle. The middle of the room is where the bad shit happens, you know what I mean? That, that is his sunken space. My man does not want any part of the middle of the room, you know what I mean? And he's grabbing at things, but she just keeps yanking him along. And by the way, when she was dragging him slowly like a caveman, she was eyeballing all of us. Yo, I was like, I'm kind of hard right now. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm scared and aroused at the same time. I don't know what's happening to me. She brings him back to the middle of the room. And here's... You'll know why he never wanted me to tell the story. She brings him back to the middle of the room. She picks him up by the ankle with this hand. And with this hand, boink, checks the oil. Finger in the asshole, right? A finger that we found out later still had buffalo wing sauce on it. Yeah, that's why he was so mad. It makes a lot more sense now, right? Yo, my man snapped. He was just sitting there. And you know when you've seen your buddy snap, they just go dead face? He was just like... And he just looks at her and he goes, I'm going to fuck you up. <laughs> she wasn't even nervous. She wasn't scared. She had just been beating this little dude up for almost a half an hour. You know what I mean? She just had digitally raped him. She's got no problems with this dude, you know? And he makes the threat and she just goes, <sighs> <laughs> and he runs right at her. 
and screams at the top of his lungs, I'm gonna take you down! Right? And he takes off and just starts sprinting. She's just kind of standing there, and he ran into her with everything he had. And, by the way, great form tackle. Head up, shoulder in. It made that loud slap because they were both shirtless, you know. It was amazing. And he hit her hard and he tried to take her down. And I'm going to tell you something right now. He did not. Uh, it happened exactly the way all of you were picturing it happened. Because <laughs> when his little body hit hers, she just absorbed him for a second, you know. He even disappeared. I was like, hey, where the fuck did he go? And then she just, poof, shot him out of her belly, just, boom, and he slid on the floor, and my friend ran up to him and was like, that just fucking happened to you! <laughs> and I turned to her and I let her go home. Guys, she starts dancing like this, and I'm like, oh, the night's not over? Okay. <laughs> she told me later, the night would have been over, but he challenged me. Nobody yeah. challenges me. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> so she, she's standing there, and she goes, you want to see my finishing move? You want me to finish him? And I was like... If I had known the finishing move was on the menu, I'd have ordered that motherfucker at the beginning of the party. Are you kidding? You've got a finishing move? Let's see that, right? So she's standing next to him. She goes, finishing move? And we go, yeah. She goes, you want to see that finishing move? And we go, yeah. She goes, finishing move? And we go, yeah. And then she just sat on his head and we went, no. <laughs> Guys, this dude's head disappeared. All you could see were his tiny arms slapping her back. It was the craziest thing I've ever seen. It was like a reverse birth. It was fucked up, right? Now, a couple other things. So I run into his dad. And by the way, this is when you know you've pulled a good practical joke. Good practical jokes are any jokes that continue to pay dividends for you long after your joke is over. So I run into his dad about a month and a half after the party, two weeks before the wedding. And um, he goes to me, he goes, hey, you're not coming to the wedding? I was uninvited to the wedding, by the way. Uh, totally worth it. So I would trade a friend today for a story like that. Fuck him. Um, I'm going to show you how he uninvited me. This is my favorite part of the story. This is my favorite part of the story. This is how he invited me. We're still at the party. She had just gotten off of him. Oh, he was mad. Yeah. And he yeah. stands up and he yeah. goes, you're not coming to the wedding! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm getting a hood coming out of that All right. Okay, I'm gonna tell you something else. And this 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 never gets told, alright? So he developed a nickname that night. No, I'm part of the being a storyteller is answering your own fucking questions. So if you shut up for a second, I will get to it. Thanks. I know you're annoying me from up here. I can only imagine what's happening to the people you're sitting next to. But if it was earlier in the show, I'd address it. But I'm like, well, I'm going to be out of here in 10 minutes. So she'll just annoy those people too. <laughs> okay. So here is, this is the nickname. Okay. So he gets up. And um, he's walking out of the living room to go into the bathroom to hang himself, I'm assuming. <laughs> and my friend, I have a friend of mine who was there, and um, he's one of the darkest, he has one of the darkest sense of humor, which is one of the reasons that I think, you know, he's one of my dear friends. And, um, but he was sitting there, and I knew he had something up his sleeve, because he, he got a little smile on his face when my buddy was walking up to him. So my buddy's walking up to him, and this is the nickname he got. He goes, damn, man, you look like a glazed donut. <laughs> and it, so I wasn't invited to the wedding, but I made all the groomsmen glazed donut t-shirts, right? <laughs> and when he was walking down the aisle, they all just gave him a, what's up, right? And then his mom, the week after the wedding, called me and was like, do you have any extra of those cute glazed donut t-shirts? 
She goes, I love glazed donuts. I'm like, yeah, so does your son. I, <laughs> oh, I got her one for every day of the week. My buddy called me. He was like, my mom loves that fucking t-shirt, man. But anyways, his dad goes, uh, you're not coming to the wedding? I go, nah. And he said, why not? And I said, oh. <laughs> Tim didn't tell you? And he goes, no. Is there a story? And I go, do you have a couple minutes? Sit up, sit up. <laughs> and then his dad used that story as his best man speech. The what? And I asked him, I go, hey, why would you do that to your son? And he goes, Tim shouldn't have been such a pussy. <laughs> <laughs>